Hello, this is Bob Browner with Community Coronavirus Update number 78. We'll talk about the latest numbers, uh, making the extra point hopefully, and the pandemic post-mortem or after-action report. Uh, so good news is that our numbers uh, in Lincoln and Nebraska as well keep dropping. And so for a long time, we just plateaued and didn't make progress, finally hit the vaccination rates we really need and started seeing a big drop here. Uh, so hopefully we'll continue this and, uh, and be in the clear for the fall, but maybe not. And we'll talk about why not, possibly not. We'll see. Uh, keep in mind, there are still people in the hospital that are still dying, for example. And so we're having, you know, 12, half of our hospitalizations are also coming from outside of Lincoln. And partly that's from areas of low vaccination rates, which we'll also get to in a minute. Uh, but overall, the numbers are looking really, really promising. And so this is great to hear, uh, but we still got to score that extra point, which we'll get to. Um, if you look at nationally, uh, the worry, of course, uh, like I talked about last episode, is will we have pockets of resurgence? And uh, we were down to one orange state uh, on the COVID Act Now state a few days ago, but now we're back up to three orange again. So some states may be heading back up. Always good to look at it at a more granular level. And so you can see county level views and see sort of where the, some of the hot spots appear to be. Uh, if you overlay these hot spots, they overlap almost exactly where the low vaccination rates are. So if you go to New York Times, see that you know so those some same areas that are low vaccination rates are also areas of potential hot spots another problem so some of you who follow our own tableau site know that it's been sort of not accurate for a while and part of the problem we're seeing right now is that states are sometimes dropping their data in nebraska and made a change in its data so nobody had access to accurate nebraska data for a while it looks to be hopefully evened out now so if you go to our own tableau site it'll start being updated again uh, but unfortunately the data problems which are which were a problem before coronavirus are, are starting to crop up again uh, so Nebraska as a whole, like I said, it, it, we are dropping, which is good. Uh, we're at number six uh, as far as the lowest rates, which is very, very promising. Uh, be a little careful about the county level, because Nebraska has such a low population counties, it doesn't take many uh, cases to go from flip to green to red. And that's why the one thing I look at our own public tableau site is this one, and that's because it lumps them together to sort of even out that, that is noise, noise and fluctuation. What I'll be looking at at the Nebraska Health Department level is any of them hit, hits greater than 10, which is that sort of orange range. Uh, unfortunately, out west, uh, there is it's not that high yet, 5, but if it starts hitting 10, 20 range, then we know we're going to have another surge out there where we've got low vaccination rates. We really want to be in the probably less than 2 or 1 range, and that's where Lincoln is, and, and most of the states. All this green is essentially less than 1, and I would list, what we really want to see is this all turn green. Uh, before we consider ourselves in the clear. Um, the, probably the most important article I think has come out in the last two weeks is this JAMA article modeling uh, the current potential scenarios going into the fall uh, based on COVID-19 vaccination rates, dropping non-pharmaceutical interventions like wearing masks, and the possibility of variants uh, causing uh, less uh, effectiveness of the vaccines. Uh, and it's a lot of modeling scenarios. It's pretty deep dive. The short version is the range of scenarios is extremely wide. Uh, and so uh, now one thing I'd, I'd caution that this scenario I don't think is, is realistic. This For this scenario to happen, we'd have to have a 50% efficacy virus and only 25% coverage. Uh, I don't think that would happen. Uh, we, we know that so far, at least with the Delta variant, we're probably still at least a 80 to 90% range coverage, for example. So we're going to have a, probably at least a 90% efficacy virus or vaccine. Uh, and coverage is probably hopefully going to at least be in the 50 to 70% range, so our uh, you know, bad variant study could come in and cause some thing, cause some more uh, another surge in deaths this fall. The range of the study, though, is quite range. It's anywhere from 70 to 2,500 deaths in the United States uh, a week if you calculate this out as a, as a range for this fall. You know, 70 is really low. That's less than a bad than a typical flu year. That would be you know not enough for me to worry much. But 2,500 deaths per week. Uh, to put that in perspective, that's more deaths than every year, uh, or a de death rate higher than all the all the gun deaths, all the car wreck deaths, and all the typical flu deaths in a year. So we could be back in that range if everything went wrong and we had a new variant that escaped uh, the immunity of both natural and vaccine-induced immunity. So you know we're we're looking good. I think we'll probably skew more to this, especially in the high vaccination rate areas of the country. But you know we're not out of the out of the woods yet. Um, and so you'll start seeing more articles about this. The, the new Delta variant, which is the new name for B1617.2 out of India, this is some concern because it does appear to be more infectious and potentially uh, more severe for young people, unfortunately. Uh, so far, we've only detected seven so far in the, United, in, the, in the state of Nebraska. So, But if we can keep our vaccination rates high enough, this can keep this out of Nebraska and keep it from taking over. 
Um, and so we still have some risk though. So we're not out of the woods yet. We're certainly things are looking great and it's nice and I'm getting pretty close to my normal lifestyle pre, pre coronavirus, but I'm fully vaccinated as are all my family members. Uh, but we have to watch out for low community vaccination rates, current rates of spread if they pop up, the waning natural immunity that people have this overconfidence that I got it back, you know, a year ago and now I'm fully immune, which is not true. And because the new invariants may escape immunity. And so we have to watch out for those indoor unmasked gatherings of non-immune people will cause a potential, uh, fire to break out again. Um, so, you know, here's again, uh, I, uh, like I say, said before, I really like the Lancaster County dashboard of how they're uh, visualizing age range, ranges of who's been vaccinated with at least one shot versus fully vaccinated. But keep in mind, there's a bar missing here. That's the less than zero to 11. And essentially you need to look at the inverse of this, which means that uh, under people under 65, all these folks in the red are potential fuel for a fire to spread. So if a new variant comes in, there's still a lot of people who could spread that around, uh, cause more hospitalizations, death, especially if a variant uh, is either more infectious, which we know the Delta variant is, but if it's more severe, which it might be, and if it's uh, uh, more uh, higher risk for the youth, we still have an issue there. So we still have to watch out for all this fuel to spread. That's why we need to get this, this green bar dropping all the way to here on this inverse view. Um, you know, we need to increase access to the vaccine still. I think the easiest place to get a vaccine is, is hy V. honestly. I think they've got an easy way to, to get on and log in and make, get your shot. Uh, they are now letting, uh, uh pediatrician offices at least give the vaccine. I wish it was uh, broader and faster, but we need to use every opportunity we can the next three months to get every vaccinated. Uh, last night at the school board, the Lancaster County Medical Society brought this letter of support to try and encourage all parents to get their kids vaccinated. Uh, within two weeks, we had over 115 local Lincoln's physicians, PAs, and nurse practitioners signing on. So if you're in Lincoln and you see a family doctor, a pediatrician, chances are your doctor or pediatrician is on that list. People saying, yes, you should do this. Uh, there is very little controversy on the medical community as far as whether you should get a vaccine. The answer is if you have a kid 12 to 18, please get them vaccinated. Uh, and we'll push this full list out here shortly, hopefully, and make it a link and you'll see more about this. So, you know, this is the way we make that extra point. We, we got to the red zone and we scored the touchdown, but you still got to make that one extra kick. And for me, I think that's the vaccine campaign this summer. That's where we get this right and get out of this thing. Lastly, we'll talk about the uh, the sort of the post-mortem or the after-action report. Uh, and there was a good podcast uh, on, uh, from Public Health on Call with Philip Zillico, who was uh, one of the folks who did the 9-11 Commission, talking about how actually we should start working on this now and not wait. And his reason for this is that uh, there's a lot of things that are fresh in people's mind. If you wait too long to start this after-action report or most post-mortem, you're going to miss some data. We need to start looking through this. This is unfortunately the worst public health failure in a century. We need to make sure we do not do this again. Uh, so it, uh, it's worth listening to. And if you really want to dive into it, the first postmortem has been written. Uh, so Michael Lewis's book, The Premonition, I just finished this book last night. It's an excellent book that talks about the cast of characters that kept it from being as bad as it could have been. So as bad as the coronavirus was, it was, we could have killed off two or three times as many Americans had we really, really got it wrong. And there was sort of a guerrilla campaign of public health folks uh, that called themselves the Wolverines who helped uh, do this. And they based, they had, the frustrating thing to me is I kept hearing people saying, oh, nobody could have predicted this. Literally there was a group of people within the Bush administration that wrote a pandemic plan to address all of this. Uh, one of those people involved, uh, the main char cast character is Carter Mesher, but one of those people is James Lawler, who's at the University of Nebraska right now. So when this happened, that group started pushing out that plan, trying to explain it to everybody because the federal, state, and local people were not paying any attention to it. And actually, it was them sending their information out. I got on that chain eventually, and that's how I got started with my very first coronavirus update. Uh, and so, uh, so I, after seeing some stuff, but Ali, La Ali Khan and uh, James Lawler and Carter Mesher were putting out, started emailing uh, folks at all levels to try to get them to pay attention because at the time I didn't think they were. And so this is literally an email I sent out to folks in the medical community March 16th of 2020 asking for their help. And I had, I had actually recorded upright number three, emailed it to all these people and emailed it to those folks in the medical community because we needed to make a decision as soon as possible. At this time, our big struggle was, do we close Lincoln Public Schools right after spring break? We did do that. It turned out that right was the right decision. Uh, the, 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 the states that closed their schools in a timely uh, basis probably saved tens of thousands of lives. Uh, the reason New York had that initial outbreak, for one, is they actually waited too long to close their schools, where we did not. So we did, uh, history I think will prove that we did make that right decision. Uh, but it was Carter Mesher's rationale, which I quoted and bolded and you know, put in black just to try to get everybody's attention, because I thought this was a good one. If you want to hit pause and read it, you can. 
Uh, in the book, they actually talk about uh, this uh, modeling, which is one of the things that convinced me we needed to close our schools. Uh, interesting thing in the book is that this Bob Glass, it was actually his daughter's science fair experiment that led to, the, to this model, interestingly. It's a really fascinating story about how that came about. Uh, so, you know, talk about wisdom from the mouths of babes. Uh, but actually, that gave them ideas, and, they, and then he, Bob got to the right people. They ran these models and actually showed that this is a multi-layered strategy, which people have a hard, hard, a hard time grasping. Closing the schools by itself wouldn't work. Masking by itself wouldn't work. Closing daycares by itself wouldn't work. It was the layering of multiple interventions which led to the Swiss cheese model you've been hearing about. The more things you put in place in the right order at the right time, the lower the rates of spread and deaths went. Also at the time, uh, this was again from my episode number three, which I've linked down below. You can listen to it again. Uh, when I first saw Carter Lawler's, uh, or, or James Lawler's presentation, I thought he was being alarmist until I read the, read the numbers myself and said, oh my gosh, I think he's right. Uh, as did many other people in the book that tell you about that. They thought, oh, he's off. Uh-oh, no, he's correct. Well, how right were we? So one of the things I did in episode number three is I actually brought it, brought it down to the Lincoln level. And so based on those projections, using Carter Mesher's initial model that James distributed, it was potentially 480,000 deaths uh, nationally, 2,894 in Nebraska, 450 Lincoln, assuming a relatively mild case. Well, what happened over a year later? later? We had we're almost 600,000 deaths and counting, so it's far worse than, and I talked to James Aller about this a few months ago. He said, you know, I, I was worried that this could happen. I didn't think we'd mess it up that bad, but which unfortunately did. Now, the state of Nebraska didn't do as bad. Actually, our deaths are a little bit lower than what the rest of the U.S. did, but frankly, that's because our municipalities took the lead, Lincoln and Omaha. So Lincoln's numbers, well, we, were far, we far overperformed. We prevented over 200 deaths because we did do the right thing that the rest of the country didn't do. And the reason Nebraska's numbers are lower Frankly, you subtract that. That's almost all Lincoln, a little bit of Omaha. Lincoln and Omaha did do the right thing. And so uh, I still get emails, uh, even here this week, uh, uh, with uh, people saying, how come we're not doing what Florida do? And they're doing all this. Well, I point out to people, at the end of the day, it's dead, not dead. Florida is this green line here. They killed off over two times more people than we did. They did not do the right thing. We should not be fly following the lead of Florida or South Dakota. You follow the lead of the people who did it the best, people like, say, Maine or Hawaii or huh, Lincoln, Nebraska. And so at the end of the day, we, we did the right thing. We got our schools open, we, but we did it correctly. We had everybody wearing masks, for example. We put uh, mask ordinances in place when we needed to, and it meant that we killed off far fewer pe a portion of our population. At the end of the day, your public health response is based on dead, not dead, not based on any random uh, ideology or wishful thinking. So uh, hopefully, if you want to go back, I've linked uh, in the notes section to episode number three, so you can go back in history, and uh, hopefully you'll see more postpartums of veteran inf information coming out in the future. Do whatever you can to help get your uh, friends and family vaccinated. That's our way to ticket out of this thing. So hopefully this is helpful to you. All. These are my roles in the community, uh, but disclaimer, these are my opinions, not necessarily those uh, of the organizations that I work with and for.